Hi, my friend Calvin here. Today, I'd like to talk about MIT Sloan online business courses. Previously, I have made several videos about Harvard Business School online program called Core Credential Readiness. A lot of my audience liked them, and uh, some of them later asked me about my thoughts on MIT Sloan online courses. If you haven't watched my Howard Business School online course videos, please find their links in the description below and watch. Before we start, please destroy the like button below and smash the subscribe button if you haven't. There are about three kinds of online courses provided by Sloan, which is the business school of MIT and is known for its quality and influence in the world of business. Former HPCO Carly Fiorina graduated with Master's in Management from Sloan in 1989. John S. Reed, class of 1965, served as the CEO of Citigroup and the chair of the New York Stock Exchange. Donald Feitz, a 1971 Sloan grad, served as CEO of Caterpillar from 1990 to 1999. Kofi Annan graduated from Sloan in 1972. He served as Secretary General of the United Nations from 1997 to 2006. Judy Levent, class of 1972, became the first female CFO of a major corporation when she joined pharmaceutical company Merck in 1980, etc, etc, etc. All of them formally graduated from MIT Sloan with real degrees. But real degree is not what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about online courses provided by MIT Sloan, which when completed, you receive a certificate of completion, not a degree. The three kinds of MIT Sloan online courses are MIT Management, Executive Education Online Courses for Individuals, which is what I'm going to talk about today. MIT Sloan Executive Education's online programs provided by Emeritus.com in collaboration with MIT Sloan. This is not what I'm gonna talk about today. The last one is Sloan School of Management courses provided via OpenCourseWare, which offers free MIT online courses. As you probably expect, those courses provided via OpenCourseWare are old, but not as outdated as you might think. Most theories and methods taught in these courses are still in use today in business. The best part is that they're free. This is my favorite. You can find the links of these courses in the description below. I myself took a Howard Business School online program called Core Credential Readiness, which gave me basics of financial accounting, business analytics, and economics. But I regret taking it, and I talked about it in two of my previous videos, which if you haven't watched, please find their links in the description below and watch. Later, I registered for CFE Level 1, and recently I have started uh, regretting doing that. I'll talk about why I regret in one of my future videos. So if you want to know, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell. That way you won't miss it. Now let's talk about MIT Executive Education online courses for individuals. Their executive education programs have four different formats. In-person, live online, blended, and self-paced online. Self-paced online is mainly what we're going to talk about today. The in-person ones are the most expensive, costing from 15,000 to 40,000 to even 65,000. Normally requires six days to four weeks in-person participation. They gave you a certificate when completed with some credits called Executive Education Units, EEUs. Note that they give you a certificate not a degree. That means that you are unlikely to be considered as an MIT student. For me, this is crazy. This is almost like ripping off both of my arms. I will never pay for such a program, never ever. Even if one day I become an executive or a senior manager who are paid well for the EU's executive education units that you will receive at the end of the courses, I personally highly doubt its contribution to your future promotion. At least based on my personal experience, the major factors that get you promoted are how well you do at your current job and your networking, especially with your boss and your boss's boss. Your willingness to learn and develop yourself 
is important, but not the major factor. I don't think your boss will promote you just because you have taken some certificate programs provided by an elite school while you are stuck at your current position. I think it would be really weird to promote someone to vice president of customer relationship just because this person took MIT Sloan executive education program while 50% of their customers have been complaining about their services. I think the certificates and credit of the skills that are needed in your future positions are pluses but not prerequisites. What knowledge one is going to get from an educational program is important. But what's more important is how that experience is going to change that person's career, hopefully improve. Especially when we consider the time and money we put in when acquiring the knowledge. The blended and live online courses are similar in terms of time and cost. They're mostly two to three day programs and cost 4,300 to $4,500 USD. To me, this is unimaginably expensive. Think about it. It's only two day courses and cost $4,500. As you would expect, you also receive a certificate of completion and two units of credit. Those that require in-person interactions and real-time interactions are much more expensive than self-paced online courses. Now let's talk about the self-paced online courses. Which are the cheapest of this kind of executive education programs provided by MIT Sloan, but still cost $2,800 in six weeks, six to eight hours per week. That means you can take these programs while you are working for full time, unless your work is just too busy. This is similar in design with Howard Business School online courses. But one of the differences between MIT Sloan online courses versus Howard Business School online courses is that these MIT Sloan online courses are designed for business executives, while those Howard Business School online courses are for those who just graduated and for those who are about to get into business world. Their target participants are different. In business terms, their customer segments are different. Note that I'm calling those who take these online courses participants, not students. That's how this business school consider those who take their online programs. The Howard Business School online program that I took, Credential of Readiness, cost me $2,250 and 17 weeks of my time. I will never take any of these courses again unless my company pays for the cost and recognizes the value of the course. I'm not saying that I don't invest in my personal and professional development. What I'm saying is that I wouldn't invest in my personal and professional development in a such an expensive way. Instead, I will find free courses and take them or buy books and read them. No glamorous certificate, but with only useful knowledge that I can apply in practice and solve real business problem is enough for me. Now let's talk about actual MIT courses. Right now, MIT Sloan provides 26 self-based online courses from management analytics, cybersecurity, negotiation, interpersonal communication, artificial intelligence, business analytics, internet of things, pricing, machine learning in business, et cetera, and et cetera, and et cetera. You can find the ones that you're interested in and check them out. Basically, each of them costs about $2,800 and six weeks of your time, one module per week with different start dates. Once again, in the end, you'll be given two units of credits and a certificate of completion. That's it, very similar to other online courses. That's actually all I wanted to cover about the self-paced online courses provided by Howard Sloan Executive Education. In the end of this video, I'd like to add some of my thoughts on the modern day education, especially in the US and Canada, which is what I'm quite familiar with. This MIT Sloan online course Courses are some example of productizing education, especially by those elite business schools whose specialty is generating cash for business. I often wonder if and how productizing education would contribute to demobilization of social classes, which would further increase the income and wealth inequality and polarize the society. History taught us that once the layer structure of the society is fixed for a long time, social instability would rise, such as crimes, protests, terrorists, 
and other terrible things, even wars, that when accumulated enough will cause the restructuring of the entire society. I know I just jumped from MIT Sloan online courses to wars. I'm sure you're lost, but what do I mean? I mean, give the poor more chance to move up in the social ladder. One way to do this is to decrease the school tuitions and fees and student burdens. Don't design the educational system in such a way that only wealthy families can afford. Make the education more friendly towards the poor families. Otherwise, the society becomes so unstable that somebody on the street would rob your belongings and even shoot you under the daylight. I know this sounds crazy and BSing, and you might be thinking that more policing will solve the problem. I think history and science have taught us enough that more policing cannot solve this kind of social problem. I think a lot of educational programs have been categorized into different classes, which are priced vastly differently and have been designed to meet the needs and demands of different social classes with different social and economic status. From the surface, this program would consider anyone who would meet their requirements. I said consider, I didn't say accept. But if you look closer, you'll realize that how these programs have been designed in a such a way, on purpose or not, those who have better social economic status can afford easily. Those that I call luxury programs, which not only require much higher tuitions and fees, but also lead their attendance to much more glamorous and rewarding jobs. This probably have made the rich kids to get those glamorous and more rewarding jobs easily, while the poor kids are fooled. I'm not saying it's good or bad, I'm just pointing out a phenomena that I observed. I could be wrong, don't take what I just said seriously. That's it for today. Don't forget to destroy the like button below and smash the subscribe button if you haven't. Thank you very much. As always, see you next time.